Hi, and welcome to Across the Desk. This week, we have Sean Cummings on again with us, and we're going to talk a lot about what's going on in Oklahoma politics right now, as well as different political races and everything else you may not know about, coming up right here on Across the Desk. Once again, Sean, thank you for coming to the Good show. To see you, my friend. It's Taking been a your, while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Taking your time to come here really means a lot to me. Oh. And I know we're good friends and everything else, so it, so I know it's really not too big of a bother. <laughs> but I really do appreciate it. I, You know, the thing is, is we don't do this often enough like a podcast, but yeah. we do it often enough to give good information. Exactly. And that's what everybody wants. Yeah. Let me tell you, I saw like 16 of your signs coming in. Good for you. Thanks. Here's the thing I like to see about that. When you get new people that run for office, they're always a little timid. You're not. You're a business owner. Yeah. you got to go grab a vote. You know, I only fish where there are votes. Yeah. And what I see here is you want everybody to know you're running. Yeah. You know, and the people that don't want to really have people know that are going to lose. Mm -hmm. You're so, right. Well, good move. I'm proud of you. You know, this is my first campaign that I'm running as a candidate. People mm -hmm. don't know that. I haven't said anything about that oh, for the show. He's running for city council. Yeah, I'm running for city council. I'll just, I'll do it for you. Do it for me. So here's the thing we need. We need people that are Democrats that are willing to actually fight. Lots of them say they'll fight. Eh, they don't much fight. You and I, we do the same thing. <laughs> well, you know, it, it helps to have a vision. Mm -hmm. It helps to be persistent. It does help with the business end. It helps that I'm able to, I'm not shy when it comes to talking. Right. And, you know, having having just big balls. I can't yeah. that, you know what, it's an appropriate thing to say, because I get people, go, they'll go, well, I saw you in an interview and you looked arrogant, and I said, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. Yeah. I have confidence because I know my material. Yeah. You live here, you're in the area, you've lived here for quite a while. You do this every week. You participate. You're not really yeah. a newbie. Mm. You they, just look like a they newbie. They say that because they're intimidated by you. That's why. Because, see, it, 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 I wrote a book, too, other yeah. than just being a candidate. And my wife was in it. And, and it. Yeah. And one of the lessons in there is to make stuff up. Yeah. Why do they make stuff up? Well, one, if they can make you seem a little lesser, right. I say, you're arrogant. Well, then that, that makes them a little less anxious about you. Right. And maybe they can feel just a little more relevant about themselves at the same yeah. time. That's and that's the strategy I'm using, yeah. really, man. It, and a lot of it has to do with just going out and meeting people, right. shaking their hands, saying, Hi, I'm Kit Fairchild, and I'm running for Ward 1 City Council. There is an absolute way to win, and especially on smaller races, the more people you talk to. Mm -hmm. They don't even have to like you, but you took the time to go see them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing the exact same plan. Now, mm -hmm. what I do is I do what's called a, a white letter. It's, it's out of a book that the Obama campaign ran. I do those first thing, this is why I'm running. And yeah. then, but you're in a neighborhood, they know you. Yeah. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. But if they don't know you, you need to do that. And then I go knock every door myself. Yeah. Myself. Myself. That's what I'm doing. Because it's not the same thing with somebody else. You know, and that's another thing I was thinking. I was thinking, my ward is pretty small. Yeah. It's really, literally, this subdivision, the subdivision to the south of me, and the one across the street. You can hit every house. Right. So I can hit every house yeah. in less than three weeks. Right. And then you, you know, just double it up and do it again. Yeah, do it, double it up and do it again. Yeah. There's no secret to it, but you've got to be willing to do the work. If you've got a full-time yeah. day job that you can't get away from mm -hmm. and children at home, it would be very difficult, difficult to run. If you own your own business, yeah. for one, you're ideal for politics because you'll understand budget you and understand management. management. I, have right. a, I have a college education in administration, do which you is really management. Minds in yeah. communications. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in management and a, and a minor in applied science, which includes computer information systems, land surveying courses, and astrophysics mathematics. So that's, yeah, that's out of my league. Yeah. I know how to cook a lot of food. I do, a, I do a lot of engineering stuff. <laughs> that's that's cool. what I use my business degree towards, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and, and performing arts, because yeah. I do a lot of that, too. You are a mix of business and uh, and talent, and that usually doesn't come together very well. No, not really. I wish somebody had told me when I was younger, go, man, you could easily be a producer. Because yeah. I'm, I'm able to do the talent side, and I can do the business side. And I just never saw either one as making him that much money, so I had to do a real job. Like you know, you I learned producing... I was in a band in my 20s. A lot of people might know this, but I was in an all-original band in my right. 20s. We wrote all our own music called Animation. Nice. It was in the 90s, and right. we traveled the whole Midwest, slinging CDs, T-shirts, right. buttons, everything. And I tell you what, nothing 
gives you a crash course in self-promotion and entrepreneurship, like slinging CDs and T-shirts to make sure you got enough gas money to get you the next gig. So I'm just saying, <laughs> so that I was a great a... experience for this, because that is all about meeting people. And I'm telling you, when you're in a band and when you do performance arts like that, it's all about, like unlike theater, with the band, there's no fifth wall. You are yeah. interacting with that crowd. You want right. them to respond to what you're yeah. doing, and you are it. You are connecting with them. So it, it's kind of like this in a way, where I'm connecting with an audience. You do right. that live too, especially in a band situation. And that, and then after you're done, you go out and you meet the people, and yeah. you go, "Hey, man, here's my CD. Here's right. hey, man, you, yeah, this song. Did you like CD? that song? It's on here. Right. You know, That's stuff right. like that. Get a T-shirt." So, so when I did stand up, we didn't really. I toured doing stand up, so we're mm -hmm. we we have really kind of weirdly overlapping backgrounds. We didn't have that much to sell. But I had to manage my money properly because mm -hmm. they put you in these rank hotels. I mean, God, they were yeah. awful. And uh, but most of the time they gave you checks, and you're out on the road. Yeah. There's nowhere to cash them. There's no yeah. bank to put them in. No, no, no telephone banking yeah. or any of that stuff. So I would have to live on 150 or 200 bucks a week, including yeah. gas, to get from deal to deal to deal. But it was great to we do. We got a production company, work. and we yeah. get paid every so often with them. Yeah. And then sometimes we'd have a deal like the book. Club owner would pay us so much yeah. percentage up front, but you had to make sure they didn't duck out on you right. before you were done. But you know that that was the yeah, experience. That was you know, hey, I, I did it in my twenties. You know, eating beanie weenies and truck stop oh, yeah. sandwiches and gig to gig, and it was a lot of hard work. You know, because I tell you what, that song "Money for Nothing" yeah. by you know, they meant uh, it. Tire Tire Straits. Straits. Right. That's that that song <laughs> is such a pair. You know, they wrote that song because yeah, that's not hard work. I tell you what, I, oh, I'll tell you what. Well, you were setting up your own gear. I, yeah, yeah. Gear. Well, honestly, I was the lead singer. Of the band, so my was responsible for the set list and the banner. Um, it was the drummer who had all the work. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you can tell the difference between a working drummer and a gigging drummer but, but by the size of the drum set. Oh, right. Because a gigging drummer <laughs> will have a snare, a big right. kick drum, and maybe a cymbal and a hi-hat. He might have another tom somewhere, <laughs> but he doesn't have a big set. That guy's working. Yeah. The guy with the big rack and the toms yeah. and everything, that guy's playing in the garage. Okay, that's so right. that's that, that's how you can tell right. the difference between a seasoned drummer who right. gigs and one who doesn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> but it makes sense. Yeah, it, yeah. Okay, so you take all of that and now you're applying it to politics. So it's a natural fit. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolute natural fit. It actually is a natural feel. Right. You know, handing out a flyer. Come and, see my show. <laughs> right. And when we're looking at, at people to yeah. run, that's really what... You know, and here's the other thing. Here's another thing you don't you know did. about me. Yeah. And I do have a placard somewhere, but I was actually... The president of the chapter of my fraternity get and out. the treasurer of my fraternity yeah. for two terms. Actually, I was so good at treasurer, won the international leadership award for it because we were the only treasurer chapter who was in her careers, <laughs> and we won it by default. And then after that, I was the president of my chapter. Good and you. nothing teaches you rush the mm -hmm. rush event, right? Just where you're trying to get you're people, you're trying to yeah. get new pledges. Hey, my name's Kit Fairchild, right. and I'm a member cool. of Talk at the Epsilon right. Fraternity. Come meet my come meet my brother or whatever else. This is our fraternity, right? Same thing. You know, and the other thing we learned about that was how to run an organization. It's a not for profit company. You so learn do they how to run teach that. you that so or do you learn it on your own? We learned it on our own. We had help from our alumni and a board of advisors who helped us in that. Hey, here's how it is and it's set up just like a corporate nice. entity would. And you know what we did? Three of the members of my band were in that fraternity. So yeah. when we ran our business, we ran it like a fraternity business. Yeah. We, we had a regular meeting it. with a yeah. secretary, and we passed right. you know, stuff in our band meetings. We usually did it at the Henry Hudson's and bought a, you right. know, bought some beers and some uh, <laughs> battered mushrooms right. and had our band meetings. But that's yeah, how we sure. held it. So on my first business, we had to set up the, uh, the kind of how a business works. So you've got a president, you've got a secretary, treasurer, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Most people don't really know this, but yeah. we do. And, and then you just kind of have to have minutes of the meeting, this whole thing written out. I, I think anymore they just may pull that off a chat bot and just, you know, yeah, exactly. just to get Not it started. Anymore. But I, it was the best experience of my life doing my first business because I wasn't very good at it. Oh, yeah. And that's why I was, and you know, anything I learned in college, micro or, or macroeconomics, had nothing to do with actual... Get out there and put the flyers out and tell people. Yeah, that's marketing and sales. Are they happy? That's right. marketing. Yeah. Which I love marketing. I so can tell you guerrilla what. marketing is what I thought was most effective mm -hmm. and translates to politics. Yeah. So the reason I, I say this, I like how you're doing your campaign. And Thank you. our, our group, People's, <laughs> People's Council for Criminal Justice Reform, are going to come out yeah. and volunteer for it. 
So awesome. <laughs> we're gonna have one day of all of us coming out to the neighborhood. But the the, the challenge. You know, I am all about. Oh, what you guys are doing with that yeah. organization. Here's the here's the thing that I would say. I I wish all Democrats were on board, but they're truthfully just you know all of them are not. But we had a, a deal last Saturday, and the head of the jail came down and hung out with the families that had been had a, had a son or daughter killed there yeah. in the last year. Pretty big difference from they used to call the police on us and they take yeah, all of our stuff. Now they're actually now they're inviting us into the room and all this other stuff. And so one thing I would tell people is they go, "There's been a change." How long does it take to get somewhere? And I said, "Well, first they're going to laugh at you. You know, it's the same old deal. Two to five years, and then <laughs> right, and eventually you just keep fighting, and they eventually go, "Okay, let's 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 see what they're about." Persistence matters. Right. And that's what you got to do. And so anybody running, I think you're going to win your first race out. And the reason I say it's because you're a business owner. Um, other people may not win their first one, so don't spend a bunch of money. Yeah. Just knock on the doors, make flyers at the library. It's 10 cents each, and you don't pay sales tax. Cheapest way to do it. And then just go do flyers. If that's all you can afford, that's all you can afford. Uh, yeah. They want to see hustle more than they want to see a nice flyer. I think they do. Yeah. I think they do. So I'm they proud of you. I'm, I'm proud of you for getting in. When, hustle he, it, dude. when he told me he was getting in, I was like, Okay, because I don't want to see yeah, I, people. And, and, and honestly, let's see. We're, we're doing this like, hey, man, this guy's green, but he knows all this stuff and do it. But let's be honest. I've been involved in politics for twelve years. You're not new. Right. I'm not new. I've been involved in campaigns for right. about ten years but now. I didn't Colin think you were ever going to run. I didn't think you were going to run. Yeah, I didn't think I was either. Right. I wasn't going to run. You know, it's weird. The reason why I ran is because I wasn't going to run. I got it. I got a text message mm -hmm. from Julia Kurt. Saying, we need somebody who, in this yeah, seat. She, she, and she tagged the Oklahoma County Democratic Party and said, hey, don't you? She, she sent the message where, where Work Acres put out a deal saying, hey, all the seats are open. And right. she said, don't you live in War Acres? And I was like, I live in Ward 1, yes. And that's when the Oklahoma County Good Democratic Party chimed in and said, would you please mm -hmm. consider running? And so I looked into it, and I was like, you know, if I have your endorsements, right. absolutely. So that's what Good I did. The next thing you know, I I mean, within six hours, I had money to run on and everything, right. and bam, there's your signs, there's your push cards, there's everything I when need to When you already to know everybody, I guess the advantage, real super advantage you have is you know everybody to go, hey, what do I need to do on this? What yeah, do I need to I do got on this? The, I have the resources yeah. the other people don't have. But that's okay, because now they can call you after this. You're right. So I, I wasn't going to run, and there was a, like a, a super right-wing um, Trumpster that was running, yeah. and I was like, I can't have this on our city council. I ran to just you beat. To I just me. ran to beat you that gotta person. Got to give them a better choice, right? And so, sixty-eight <laughs> percent to yeah. thirty. That's what I'm looking at. You got to get over. That's 50. what I'm looking at because yeah. you know, in this race, like you know, I'm actually going up against two other guys. There's three people in this race. Are they all males? They're, They're all males. Wow. They're all over seventy-five, <laughs> except for me. And, yeah, you, and need, you need to be They're not a walking younger. that. They're not pounding the pavement at that age without a cane or a right. walker. Uh, so I've got the advantage there with yeah. my youth and energy. So, so in my race, there's only two of us that are knocking doors: BC Phillips and myself. And, and I'm you're running would, for. We have. Oh, said, I'm, sorry, I'm running for county clerk, and it's a Oklahoma short, county clerk. It's a short term. It's one and a half years. Most people are familiar one way or another with me, video or news yep. or something else wise with the county. Well, now we've talked about all that for a long, long time. Yeah. Let's switch it for a little bit and talk about what's going on right in the now. state right now. Okay. We had a meeting yesterday in a committee, and it went off the rails. So, Clown car. Yeah. Hilarious. Grab your popcorn if you're a Democrat. Right. So what happens is uh, Brian Walters, who's our secretary of uh, Superintendent of Education, but he's still the Secretary of he's Education. He's got both jobs. He makes one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year, which means all the legislators are already like you make three times what I make. Yeah, and you suck. And yeah. so he showed up to what's called an A and B meeting, and uh, basically you have to go in and show a budget and defend your budget. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, "Well, what about this?" So he should have been studying for a week because yeah. it's Joy Hoffmeister's budget, and she was always pretty solid. 
Yeah. Just read it so you know what it is when they ask you questions. He didn't. He walked he didn't in there with some questions. No, four page paper and, and then he started going into indoctrination and all this other stuff. Yeah. He, he's he, campaign mode. The guy's a white supremacist that won by being a white supremacist. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, but he did. And, and he can't get out well he can't govern. He doesn't know how to govern, yeah. obviously, because he can't get out of campaign right. mode to govern. He doesn't know how. Yeah, you just gotta go. He just doesn't know how. So you gotta figure out a way to get people around you that you can get along with. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't get along with the next level, but you have to be able to run the show because yeah. you're the CEO at this point. So he gets up there and he starts into his thing, and, and it isn't Democrats picking on him. It's Republicans whose Republican time he's him. wasted. Yeah. That's appropriations and budget, A and B, is the most important uh, um, committee at the Capitol, they they just like, where all the money goes. And Ryan Walters came in there and wasted a bunch of taxpayer time and mm -hmm. money taking up that time yeah. by talking about stuff that had nothing to BS. do with appropriations and nothing yeah. to do with budget. Right. And then he has a spokesperson named Matt come Matt, out and Matt say, the spokesperson. <laughs> who says, well, it doesn't surprise me that these Democrats would be upset because, you know, they're all for not being transparent and union thugs and everything else. But the funny thing about Matt was that none of those people were Democrats. Right. None of them. So this is a, you know, lesson of conservative I, cowardice. I'm a Democrat and I did hit him pretty hard on TikTok. And to my surprise, mm -hmm. 50,000 people watched that video yesterday. So nice. a lot of people are upset with his, his, he just doesn't take this seriously. So the big thing is, is what he wants to do with teachers is he wants to put them on a merit pay system. And what that means is the better your students do, the better you get paid. The problem is, is you, you can't do that because all the teachers don't get the same students. Yeah. Give me a student who has two parents that have college degrees and a house where there's no um, addiction issues. That student will do totally fine. Yeah. That's not the normal student. The student comes with baggage and everything else, and these teachers have to deal with them. And so I said, well, if you're going to do merit-based, let's go off of yesterday. You get five bucks for showing up, and everything else you failed at. So you get five dollars for the day instead of 500, which is what his salary is. Mm-hmm. Almost five hundred a day. I'd take it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know in the long run where he goes. I don't see I him don't staying in office. I just this is this is a miserable start to a miserable campaign. And a when campaign. See, there we are. It's not a campaign anymore. Right. This is actually he's supposed to be he's working. Done. Right. This is your job now, buddy. Yeah. You have to go from winning to actually you, you have to be able to talk to everybody, even the people mm -hmm. that beat that you beat. Yeah, so. you got to be able to put together your office. You need to be able to manage and run it. He's he's going to struggle. This is going to be either the longest four years of his life. And, it, and 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 is he still the executive director of Every Kid's Counts too? I is think he, he still, actually quit he doing just, that, he which is a that? Betsy DeVos deal. He was he was still trying to bring in some crazy right wing Christian school that <clears> did the. Uh, patriotic history of America and yeah. trying to bring that in. Um, we have the largest Native American population here of anybody in the United States. They do not see the same history that we see no. or that he sees. Yeah. I don't want to be included with him. They, yeah. they have a whole different version of yeah. how things went yeah. and they deserve to be heard as well. So yeah. I don't know I don't know how he gets out of this. I just you know, don't. And, and that's the thing, even nationally, it's, it, it's some kind of big Republican kind Bush, of love fest right. with hating the First Amendment, yeah. freedom of expression. Right. They hate, hey, you know, Montana, hey, we're going to make a law to where you can't even say in public that you're a girl if you're a boy. And if you do, we're going to fine you 1500 bucks, and we may throw you in prison for felony just for going out in public and saying, hey, I'm a girl, when you're really not. You know, or... Or, or the crazy, the crazy one. Here's the crazy one. Somebody put in a bill in Oklahoma to make it a felony for any man or woman to overly feminize themselves. Have you seen that bill? Oh, I'm going to do a show on that. Okay, it's so, probably going to be next. So when they when they did that, it was like salacious stuff, right? Yeah. So here's where that gets into real trouble because a lot of people at the Capitol claim to be Christians, and that bill. Jesus Christ on the cross is only wearing a small loincloth. Yeah. That would be illegal. So yeah. every place that the cross is would be fined according to that law. Uh -huh. I know, mm -hmm. didn't expect me to go there, did you? Uh -uh. Right, but but that's the truth. You have yeah. literally a... Then, it's all about freedom of expression. Yeah. See, certain types of expression make conservatives okay. anxious. 
Oh. And that makes them fearful. So, oh, you can't say that because it might, what is that in that law, HB 1775? Make me feel uncomfortable. Right. Right. But that's also why Muslims make women cover themselves top to yeah. bottom because it might make you feel something. And you go, yeah, I, that's on you, buddy. Everybody <laughs> keeps trying to move back to the 1950s. Yeah, I know. And here's what I will tell you it's 70 years later, yeah. it's over. That war is yeah. lost. We, we have to figure out a way that to get everybody collect, collectively now and go, how do we want to govern from here? Yeah. Because that way literally is gone. Exactly. So. It definitely is. Right. Well, Sean, <laughs> we hit our twenty minutes man, already. I, I think we're over twenty minutes. We'll see. What I love happens. hanging out and talking with you. I love you, man. I we need it. to do a podcast. We can do it all the time. All and the it just, time. just rolls. Yeah. That'd well, wait till you're elected, because then we'll both be elected. If I don't win this other race, I'm, I'm either vice mayor or mayor in here in three months anyway. All right. Yeah. Well, Sean, we're going to be looking at you, and we're going to see, see you again. All right. You're going to be back on <laughs> as always. You've been on since season yeah. two. Cool. And here we are, season seven. Nice. And it's always great to have you on. Good and to see you. Good discussion. Good to see you. Guys, we'll be seeing you next week. February 14th. Vote for him and vote for me. There you go. <laughs>